Now, the next thing we should probably look at is the fingering choice. And again, looking yeah. at what you have here on the page, uh, I like what you just did, which is to do the shift. And I know some people might think, oh, shift, you know, this is going to make a slide. We want to avoid a slide. And again, if you look at the context of the piece being romantic yeah. and you being stating this not for the first time, in other words, it's already been spoken in another section of the orchestra at a smaller dynamic, and now suddenly you've got the whole first violin section coming in, mm -hmm. I think the argument can be made for a swoop in that sound yeah. and then something rather lush and beautiful. So that shift, I think... It's not a huge shift, and it's also not a big slide. Mm -hmm. There are certainly bigger slides you could put into this excerpt even later on. One I, written. Yeah, even there. that one there, even like one measure later. Yeah. And if you did that, I would make the most of it. Put the slide in the new bow stroke rather than the old bow stroke. Oh. Instead of that, put it in the new bow stroke and take your time with it. So let's, let's try this again. Let's make a little bit more of that initial up bow and a, a little more attention to, I wouldn't call it a slide, but the shift. Yeah. And then when we get to this, let's see what we can find in terms of an expressive slide from the, the B to the E. Okay. Now, you know, there are indications here by the composer, which is great, because if it's editorial with some composers, you have to wonder, hmm, yeah. what do I really do? But these markings are his. And it's not a very long time to go from an expressive mezzo forte. You could even argue more than mezzo forte because you've had a hairpin up with no indication of the top dynamic. But if this is strong, then it's one beat only to get to down to the piano. And so I'm used to playing this with a little bit of time, and when I say a little bit, I mean such a small amount. Yeah. But, you know, think for a moment, the detail inside your performance informs, if you're playing this in an audition situation, the detail informs the listener to how much you know the rest of the score and the style all at once. Because yeah. they are listening with their ears embodied in the score. And if they hear you playing something that doesn't match that embodiment in the score, then you feel like you are separate to them. And this is, of course, mm -hmm. if I'm speaking now with the screen up. Yeah. Usually you won't get to the screen down unless you at least get past that feeling being the same yeah. within your interpretation and the interpretation of the other people on the screen. So I think a little bit more of a sense of leisure on that fourth beat and just mm -hmm. a, a more drastic diminuendo to get to that piano. And then this crescendo doesn't actually go back up to the mezzo forte. I would say it just goes up to a mezzo piano and then okay. back down. So it's a, it's a smaller, slightly uh, less gargantuan than kind of physical and uh, Tchaikovsky. It's, yeah. it's romantic and it's Rachmaninoff and it's a little more in internal. Let's try the whole thing again, again with the up bow. <laughs> I know you know it already, but just be careful that that G sharp is held long enough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a, it's a whole two beats, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay.